When I was younger, I used to pour over magazines of concept cars. Everything from sports cars to city runarounds. However, the reality was that by the time the car came to market, it looked like some horrible 90s blob. However, if you told me that the future would look like this, that it would be designed and built in China, and it would be electric, I would have thought you would be pulling my leg. So is this really the future of urban mobility? And has this really been put together by General Motors? This is the Baojun E300 Plus, and this is fully charged. So what happens when three of the main manufacturers here in China come together and create a car? So first you've got General Motors, known for making horrifically large SUVs in the USA. Then you have SAIC, who make your electric MG. And then you have Wuling, who are a manufacturer of light vans. They create this, which can only be described as a concept car for the road. So does it really stack up to all of our expectations or is it a bit of a letdown? Let's have a look around the car and find out. I mean, we have to start with the looks, right? This thing looks amazing. So it starts off with these two beady LED headlight eyes on its kind of forehead. Um, and there's no trunk or frunk or anything of that sort to talk about here. However, there is the charging port and this on a DC charger charges from empty to full in just one hour. So I'm told. I really like this design because it looks like the top is separate from the base and they've literally just slot it on top and that you can interchange it. That's not actually the case um, at all, but I actually went in one of the older Baojun cars and because it didn't have this color separation between the two, it actually looked quite tall and ungainly where they've done a really good job here in separating the two colors. Now this is the, the longer wheelbase version. So this actually is 114 inches long. The back window is slightly bigger than the other version, which is 103 inches long. This seats four adults, so I'm told. Um, so we're gonna try that out a little bit later on. Now to open the boot, open that like that. Here we go. Oh, and there's literally no space. All I can get is two pieces of A4 paper in. Nothing else. I can't even get my hand down there. It's to be expected. It's a small city run around. You can actually fold these seats down. Um, and I apologize for this blue covering. The car's only done 27 kilometers, so it's brand new. So we do have to talk about the interior. Now, this is certainly not a luxurious space, but it's very functional. Now I have one screen and I have one screen in front of me, which tells me all of my information. There's no middle screen telling me what karaoke songs I need to play next. It's nice and simple and it's in the middle here. Visibility in here is fantastic. I've got you know windows down here. I've got my door controls down here. I've got a little bit of blue plastic around here. You know, it's, it's not very exciting, but it's a, a very functional space to be. I do have two hooks instead of a glove box though, which is uh, interesting. So we should probably talk about the back seats. Now, if you saw the Chengdu auto show footage we shot uh, a couple of months ago, you saw me struggling to get in the back of here uh, and banging my head and it was all sorts of a, a mess really, but I did get in the back and here I am in the back again and I actually have pretty reasonable leg room. I don't have much in the way of features though. I have a USB charger and a very deep pocket here uh, and that's about it. Now you could fit two adults in here. You wouldn't want to stay in here for a long time because uh, the floor is completely flat so my knees are very high so that's a little bit uncomfortable. The only worry I do have is that if you do have two adults in here that you're going to start affecting the range. Now this only has a 56 horsepower or 40 kilowatt electric motor. It is rear wheel drive, it's underneath me right now, but it does have 111 pounds-feet of torque. So 
that's quite good and it should get the car shifting even with two adults in the back. Now, for the price, we can't expect amazing amounts uh, in here because this is a car that's priced between 65 and 85,000 RMB. However, it does have these very nice blue accents around the outside, um, although it is lots of plastic, but that's completely fine of a car this price. Now, one thing I do really like in here is the visibility. I have gargantuan amounts of visibility out the front. The screen is actually quite a long way from me, uh, and I've got these two small side windows as well. And so this really helps with me driving along in the city. I can easily see down I'm not gonna hit anything because I'm so small anyway, but that's one really good feature of this car that I really enjoy. Most electric cars now seem to be going the route of having lots of buttons on a screen or on some fake button things. This has got proper tactile buttons either side of the steering wheel and on the steering wheel. So I'm actually spoiled in here. I can easily adjust the air conditioning without having to look at a screen, which when you're driving around the city and stuck in lots of mad traffic is brilliant. You know, they've really thought about that. And thankfully this car has tactile buttons as one of its main features. That's really good. Also, one other thing is there's just one screen, not two screens, there's just one screen and it tells me all of the information I need to know. My speed, my range, it's got a little picture of the car as well, it tells me how many miles I've done and the other side is for your maps and any navigation part uh, on that side. So it's, it's actually really simple and you know, that's all you need for a car like this. And one more thing that is a really great feature of this car is the fact somehow they've fitted 12 sensors on the outside and a camera on the back, on the rear and on the wing mirrors as well. So it, it is feature rich and it does help me maneuver in tight parking spaces and around the city. Not that I really need it, I could just look out the window and see the back of the car and the front of the car and you know it's very easy to move, maneuver anyway but I do have that feature and it all flashes up on the screen in front of me which is fantastic. So I did have some preconceptions with this car when I first drove it. I thought it was going to drive like a, a souped up golf cart essentially. I think, you know, the reality of it is that it's actually really good to drive. It's very balanced. I thought it would be very top heavy and a bit wibbly wobbly, um, but it's actually quite solid on the ground because it's got all the batteries in the floor. It is rear wheel drive, which is a very interesting feature. Not that you can use it in this small city car. You know, it does grip very well when you're going around corners and there's not too much oversteer or understeer. If we're going to talk about range, range for this car is between 260 and 300 kilometers any DC range, and that's depending on the model you go for. So you go to cheaper model, you get less range, more expensive model, you get the, the higher range, that's any DC range. But any DC range is actually pretty accurate in a city like Shanghai because you don't really go more than 40 kilometers an hour. So you're almost hitting that 300 kilometer range on your city drive. I've been driving this for a few days now, and it's pretty accurate in terms of kilometers. I've done 103 kilometers so far, and I've got 195 left, which is, is pretty reasonable. Now in terms of driving experience, you know, it does feel like a bit of a computer game to drive. Very light steering, the small 13 inch wheels <laughs> uh, means you can just throw it around the corner pretty easily. It doesn't really feel real, and there's not much feedback, but I think that's okay. Uh, for this little Baojun. The best thing by far in this car is the driving position. I'm actually really high up. I'm almost on SUV height. Maybe you can see behind me there's an Audi uh, and I'm actually taller than him. So I'm sitting much higher than most sedans. And with this, all this glass around me, I actually feel, you know, pretty safe on the road in terms of seeing where I'm going and what dangers there are. You know, it's great for a little city car. Now it's certainly not perfect in here. There are a few annoyances. The first one is probably a steering wheel. I can't actually adjust the height of the steering wheel. It's fixed in this position. So like it or lump it, that's where you've got to put your hands. For me, it's slightly too high. You know, it's not a massive complaint, but it's a little bit annoying. The second complaint is also around the controls. So the indicator stalk isn't where you expect it to be. So it is on the side, but it's not perpendicular. It's a little bit lower, so I keep going you know, up and down and I keep missing the indicator. It's just a, a minor thing, um, but it is quite irritating that it's not in the standard position. 
minor quibbles don't really matter really. However, for me, the biggest annoyance in this car is the brakes, okay? I feel like I'm treading on a wet sponge when I push the brakes down. I have no confidence at all. I was driving this the other day on the highway and I had to do some more heavy than average braking and it did an emergency stop on the highway, which was not good. So it's either soft, 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 not, not braking, not braking, and then all of a sudden it stops and uh, you skid. So that's a massive markdown for the Baojun. I imagine it has something to do with the size of the tiny 13 inch wheels, uh, which don't have very big uh, rotors or calipers on it. A further thing which shows that this is a slightly cheaper car is the road noise. Not really the road noise, just the noise of the car. You really can hear the sound of the electric motor when you're driving this. A lot of the cars, uh, electric cars that I've driven here in China, uh, the sound deadening is great, so you can't really hear the whine of the electric motor. This one though, you can really hear the as it accelerates. So is this a proper city car? 100% yes. It's fun, it's competent, it's well made, and most of all, it's very cute, I think. This would fit into a European city very easily. So it's a big thumbs up from me. Well done, Belgium. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode today. I really enjoyed reviewing the Baojun. We've got lots more content from China coming very soon. Please tell us in the comments what more you'd like to see from China as well. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, listen to our podcast, buy the merchandise, uh, and subscribe to our Patreon to help support the channel. And if you have been, thank you for watching.